painter will have just one uh, one scene, one picture to express a story. I grew up in a neighborhood where you should be like playing soccer or you should be football or you should be studying or working. Art is something that is an expression of your soul. I went to New York for an art festival. I got a booth right in the end of the show that was probably more than a thousand painters. I saw back in the, you know, at the end of the, of the room, who's gonna work so much just to see me that I'm new artist and so different than everything else. And actually it was a really successful show. Each week I seek out individuals who are chasing and achieving their own goals on their own terms. Each have their own individual motivation, focus and passion. Their stories will change your perspective on what is possible, open your eyes to what real people are doing, how they're doing it, and hopefully inspire you to do what you want to do on your terms. As a painter, we have just one, uh, one scene, one picture to express a story, you know? When you have a writing a book, you can, you know, you have a thousand pages to, to write and you know, explain, explain yourself and express yourself. But when, you have, when you're a painter, you have just one single image. And you gotta be really careful how to pick up that image because it has to tell a story in just one image. So it's before and after the painting. It's not just in the painting. It's just before and between and after. And to you know to go and get that is really, really thoughtful and really you know difficult to pick just one image that you know says everything. You know, but uh, that's that's our job. You know, it's three things that are very important. Uh, first of all, you have to set uh, something a focus in your life. You need to have. A target, first mm -hmm. of all. So you need to decide what you want to do. It's really difficult to be succeed, successful in something when you don't know what you want, actually. So first of all, you need to be focused on, on your target. I think secondly, um, you need to be disciplined to do every day something that gets you closer to the target. Um, and third one, the third one is uh, you need to be confident in what you do. And I think those three things go together, because without the, the triangle, without without one of them, it won't be you know it will, it will be impossible to achieve. Because if you have self confidence and you have discipline, but you know what you want, mm -hmm. you don't have the focus. So your focus is gonna be you know missing out everything everywhere. So you're never gonna get anywhere. So if you're like a you know really kind of focus and discipline, but you're not self confidence. Always, you're gonna be afraid of getting you know, there. So if you're over to confidence and you have the focus, but you don't have the discipline, the same thing. So it has to be, it can collapse. It has to be the three things, the trilogy together. And I think more you, uh, you know, practice all these things, more focus, more discipline, and more self-confidence, you're gonna get you closer and closer to the, to the, you know, uh, the success. And also, it's like uh, you know more uh, effort you put into these things, uh, farther it's going to get, you know? Yeah. And when did you realize, at what point in your life did you realize this is my, this is what I want to do? Uh, well, the thing I, I always look to be uh, an artist, but the thing is like uh, when I was a kid, I grew up in a neighborhood where, you know, you should be like playing soccer or you should be football or you should be doing studying or working, you know? Um, all the painters that I knew, um, they were dead. So, you know, normally they tell you, okay, if you're going to be a painter, you're going to be recognized when you're dead. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, they're never going to be recognized. So it's something impossible, just get a job, you know, and leave those things for other people. And then, you know, um, I, you know, I was teaching karate, that was my job and everything, and I was painting on the side. And one day somebody, you know, uh, knew that I was painting in a, in a studio in a, in a hotel. And, you know, it was a, you know, you had like a pool table and a lot of things. It was a game room. And they gave me that place for me to paint and, you know, uh, explore new things and stuff. So, they, you know, the, the people from the hotel, they knew that I was working there and they started coming over to see my, my work. And one day somebody from uh, Germany came over and, and asked me, how much is that piece? So when they, they asked me how much, you know, it's like, a, you know, ring my bell, like, a, oh, that means that somebody's going to buy that. Or they like to buy it. So I put a price for it and I sold it. So, so since that day, probably I was about 20, 21. And uh, since that day, I said, if I can sell one, I can sell everything. And then I decided to become a painter, a professional painter. It's fantastic. And how, 
along that path, there must have been times where you thought, well, were there times maybe I'm wrong? Did you ever think, I can't do this, I'm going to completely sack this all in? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time, yeah. The thing is, uh, you know, people think that is uh, when you're a painter, you're an artist, it's really glamorous in a way it is, but it's a lot of pressure. The more successful you are, it's more pressure because it's more expectation around you, you have more expectation about yourself, and uh, it's really difficult to, you know, quiet your mind and you say, you know, okay, you did this many times, you're going to do it again. Because when, you know, the inspiration doesn't come, it's really stressful for an artist. So when you have a new idea, it's a release, it's a relief, you know, it's like, okay, now it's going to be out of the air, now I have this idea, and, you know, let's keep walking, you know. But, uh, you know, some, some uh, singer uh, and writer, he was saying the syndrome of the white, paper, the white sheets, the white uh, book, you know, when it's nothing for you to write, it's really difficult, it's really stressful. Once you got some ideas and you start to put it in, so it's when you, you know, feel more release and more relief and, uh, and the same thing for a painter, when you have a, a black canvas, a uh, white canvas and you don't know what to do with it, so it's really, really stressful. You can sleep at night, you know, you wake up and you're trying, you're searching and you, you know, forcing for more, um, Actually, for more, uh, you know, inspiration, but, you know, at a certain point it comes, you know. Mm -hmm. But like Picasso says, you know, inspiration will come, but it need to get you working. When you're in the studio every day, that's what I do. When, I, when you're in the studio every day, inspiration will come, you know, but it has to be in the studio. Yeah. you got to put the time in. So for you, what would you say um, was the highlight of your career so far? The, probably the best moment. The best moment of my career? Yeah. Uh, well, I think... Professionally, um, uh, one of the best time that um, I had in art was, you know, probably in 2000, 2003, 2004, that um, I started like uh, opening my doors, you know, and showing my work more to the to the world, you know, to everybody. And I decided to do something very important. And I went to New York for an art festival, and uh, actually, um, you know, I got a booth. Right in the end of the show, there was probably more than a thousand painters showing, you know, and some books that were amazing and lighting and, you know, big names and all these things. And I couldn't afford that. So I get something really in the end, you know, really little. So after, you know, going everywhere and walking to my to my, uh, to my my place, so I was looking at all these artists, you know, beautiful stuff and everything. And when I get to my point, I said, you know, my work is so different than everything else. And then I saw... Back in the you know at the end of the of the room, who's gonna come over here and walk to see my work, you know? Yeah. So who's gonna yeah. who's gonna walk so much just to see me that a new artist and so different than everything else? And say, well, let's see what happened. And actually, it was a really successful show. You know, it was a really successful show. And since then, opens my you know my career in the whole world. And then another one was uh, matter of fact was in England that um, I was in Birmingham, and um, so. So this company, uh, the Mom for Fine Art, they invited me to do a show in, uh, in Birmingham and the headquarters that they have in there. So I sent them, sent them about 15 originals before I went there uh, for them to prepare and frame and, and you know, just put in the walls and everything. So I get them to the show uh, probably about half an hour before they opened it to the public. So then I went to my place and where my, my paintings were, hang, were hanging. And I, I took, my wife was with me, with me and uh, I saw a painting with a red dot. And I said, oh, look at that. We saw already one before we opened. And when I started looking at it, I see another one, another red dot, another red dot. So the whole show was sold before I get there. That's before, amazing. Before it opened the show. So it was really amazing and successful. And since then, we really have amazing shows all the time. And where do you want to go with this? So you've, you've created many different sort of collections. You've got this incredible style. What do you want to do next, or where do you want to take this? Well, I don't know. I don't know yet. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I just, you know, just, uh, I know it's really difficult for me to project things because um, based on the success that I have right now, which is amazing, so it's a really unique, um, it's a really unique moment for me because whatever I do, you know, practically is done quickly. So I don't have the time to project something in the future because it's, you know, it's, whatever I do is already gone. But, um, so what I do is normally I paint things that actually um, are related to my life. 
for the past, for the future, for the present, for my family, for things for that, you know, but everything is related to me. That's why, you know, some people, they ask me about why don't paint things and things like that, whatever, I don't know, salsa dancer, it's nothing, I have nothing to do with that salsa dancer, I have nothing to do, you know, it's not what I like, it's not what, um, what I dance, it's not what I like to see people dancing, it's nothing in my background doing yeah. that, so I'm really genuine with that, you know, I paint only what I feel, you know. It's not just a commercial thing that you know that you know I do it for sale. The good things like that, the things that I like normally sells really well. You know, I remember that um, when I paint a flamenco dancer, you know, like uh, years and years ago, and all my friends painted, they were telling me, "To who you gonna sell a flamenco dancer?" You know, and that was true. You know, I painted it, and I didn't think about it, but actually, it's really successful. After I painted it, you know, people liked it. So that was I was really you know lucky. And, you know, a lot of people, they tell me, yeah, your work is really commercial. Well, it's commercial because it sells, you know. <laughs> but at the beginning, it wasn't because, you know, everybody was telling me, it's too dark, uh, the mood is too, you know, it's too down, it's too depressing, it's too this, it's too that. And I said, well, this is what I like to paint, and, you know, this is what I, what I do. And actually, one, once you expose that to the people, so they, they decide what they're going to do. And, you know, lucky me, now it's commercial, you know. So, very lucky. But, but also, yeah. I think that you said a lot of hard work. So it's part luck, maybe, but you obviously put your heart and soul into what you do. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the secret, I think. I mean, that's very important when you, first of all, you need to enjoy what you do. You know, I don't want to do something that, you know, do it just for money. Uh, if I would do that, it's not art. Mm. You know, art is something that is expression of, you know, your, uh, your soul through uh, some technique or some, uh, you know, skills. So, but if you do something for work, it's not going to be too hard. You can be a painter, but not an artist. Yeah. You can be a singer, but not, not an artist. You know, being an artist is a, is a bigger thing. It's a bigger idea. It's a bigger uh, expression, you know, I think. But through skill, of course. If you don't have skills, like, you know, I see a lot of, uh, you know, pop art and new things and, you know, kind of uh, minimalism art and stuff like that, uh, conceptual that, you know, the idea is amazing, really. You know, when they, they explain that, the, you know, the, the work is amazing, I think it's, you know, you should frame the work. I mean, the, the words that they say, you know, the idea, you should frame the idea. But in the painting, I don't see the, I don't see the skills. So that's why I, I create, you know, uh, new emotionalism because uh, one of the rules is like, uh, okay, if you're going to do something, if you're going to create something, you need to show that you do something that nobody else can do. It. That, you know, that you are, you're different. You, you, you're showing something that not anyone can come over and say, you know what, just a few people, they can say, you know what, I can do that. But mostly, you know, people say, you know what, I admire this because I can see this, mm -hmm. and I can see the skills, I can really see something that, you know, you, you know, that I cannot do it because it's so difficult, it's so skillful, so this, so that. So it's the only way that people can have, you know, a point of reference to criticize the work. You know, other ways it's like, a, you know, I can be a lot of talking, but, you know, what is... What is the art, you know? What is, you know, a lot of people, they say, oh, my daughter can do that if she's four. I don't want to be in that, you know, in that category, you know? This is very true. It makes complete sense. And one thing I've got to ask is books. So, obviously, you are, you're an artist. You, you paint. But do you, or can you recommend three books that have inspired you? About art or about anything? About anything, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I like to read about spiritualism, you know? Um, at the beginning, when I was, um, you know, in my 20s or even before, I was reading a book of Miyamoto Musashi. That was uh, my, my guy almost. Miyamoto Musashi was, um, is the, the most uh, renowned samurai in the history. He was living about in the 15th, 15th century, 16th century. And uh, he got a book called um, The Five Rings. The Book of the Five Rings. Okay. Um, then I have a book uh, that I've been reading for like about 10 years. You know, I go back and forth because, you know, I finished it a couple of times already. But I go back and forth because it's a guy for me too. And he's from Soyan Rinpoche. And this is a, you know, a Tibetan monk. And uh, his, uh, his book, the most popular book is... Um, um, it's going to come to me. It's something about... Um, let me get it. I'm gonna be one second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I remember now. It's a, the Tibetan book 
of death and life. Ah, of okay. life and death. The Tibetan book of life and death. Um, you know, it's, that's really, really beautiful because uh, it's playing normally, you know, the Tibetan, they have a, you know, kind of a Bible, kind of a Bible, the same important book, that is the Tibetan book of death. But the good thing is like uh, he does it in a more, you know, uh, more extensive way, and he's playing what is the book about, and at the same time, and how, how can you use those spiritual teachings and stuff like that, but at the same time, through life also. That's it's not after that, yeah. but it's also through life also, right? Yeah. And, um, and the third book also that I recommend is like uh, The Science of the Mind okay. from um, um, Holmes. That's the last name of the author. Holmes. And that's a similar thing, but a different approach. You know, it's like a mountain, but, you know, Spirituality is a big mountain, like art is a big mountain, but you know, so many ways to get into the top. You know, you can in art, you can go like uh, playing an instrument, writing, painting, you know, acting. You know, depends the way that you get, but it's gonna be, you know, the principal goal will be like uh, to get to the, to the top. You know, and the same thing is spirituality. You know, you can be, you know, religion people or just spiritual and just get your your way to the top and in different ways. You know. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And what's the best piece of advice someone has ever given you? The advice? Mm. Um, um, well, probably like, you know, actually my, my current teacher, he's, um, he was, you know, he's about uh, 10 degrees of, you know, of karate. He's a Japanese guy. Um, he was the first one who who tell me, you know, to become an artist. Um, I remember that I, in that period I was in Italy, and we were living together for a year, a year and a half. I was his, you know, his most important student, and I was here with him and teaching, you know, in the same gyms and stuff like that, the gym in the same schools. And then, you know, like at night, he was going to sleep, and I was staying up. And you know, the next morning he was waking up, and I was sleeping. He was seeing all my drawings and paintings and things that he was seeing around, and he was studying them because he was, uh, you know, uh, he had some degrees in um, in bad arts also. He was, you know, an artist, and he said, you know what? I think you should do this more and more often, you know, and you should become a professional. So since, since that day, I started like going also to different contests and different schools and different things just to see in what level I, I was. And that gave me a lot of confidence, and that was when you know I started like a painting more and more, and like a kind of more um, um, inspired about things and more open mind about getting those inspiration coming through me, and uh, and that was when I met all these people that you know then they buy my art and stuff. And so I think it was a was a click, was a really breaking point in my in my life for to do what I do right now. You know? Wonderful. And if, if someone hasn't seen your work, they haven't seen you online or in the galleries, can you just describe to everybody what you do? Uh, well, I try to, um, and, you know, I think I try to paint an era where I don't see those kind of people anymore, really little. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I try to bring back the romance, I'm trying to bring back the education, uh, the focus in the moment, the the beauty inside, not just, you know, just the beautiful legs and beautiful faces, but the beauty inside, the education, the, the principles, you know. Um, and I think, you know, uh, I use like a beautiful people, beautiful scenes, because that is what attracts people. It's like, a, you know, um, it's like, a, you know, when you're a singer or, a, you know, you have a group or a band or whatever it is, you're a musician, it's like, a, if your lyrics are great, but you know your music doesn't work very well. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna listen to you. Mm -hmm. So you can have a beautiful lyrics, but nobody listens to you because the music is not good. So when you have really good music, people start like hearing that and they pay attention to the lyrics. The same thing in a painting. So if you don't have something attractive, something like people get, you know, they like what they see or they or they, or they feel connected to it. So it's really difficult to express yourself and people listen to you. So what you do is like are using. My student martyrs are really beautiful and really glamorous and everything. And when they, they get into it, they can understand what is the back of the scene. It's like, a, you know, when I use these people, it's like a, I use these forms 
to portray their soul. So it's not about you know the the, the physical body, but it's more the spiritual, you know, the spirituality, the, you know, the spiritual beauty that they wanted to capture. You know, so that that's I think what I what I'm trying to say when I'm you know when the people before people see my work. You know. Okay, I'm sure someone's asked you this, but what's your favorite painting? Do you have one? It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, I had three kids. It's really difficult. Like, I, which is your kids you love the most, right? <laughs> They're my creation, too, you know? Uh, well, I think the most iconic one is, like, uh, it's called Entitled 2. You know, it's, it's a man looking forward and everybody on the other side. Oh, on the bar. So is he with, on the bar looking forward? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's the most iconic. Uh, I remember when I presented it in New York. Uh, everybody was, um, you know, kind of rejecting it, like, uh, oh, what he's doing? Is he sad? Is he depressed? Is he this and that? But in the end, they, they get into it, and they start to like it, you know, and everybody wanted to buy it. And I think it's, um, I like those paintings that are really mind-boggling, that makes you think so much, and that, you know, get in because you don't know what's going on, and it's so different from everything else. Uh, that probably could be one of my you know, icons, people, pieces, you know. Dai, fantastico. Grazie mille, buona giornata. Grazie a te. Ciao, ciao. ciao. ciao.